as Siksha Guru. <laughs> so, then I made a resolution, I must go to him, I must associate with him, I must uh, take advantage of his association. That also took a little bit of time financially, but finally by 1994, now both Prankishore and myself and a few others, we went to India to attend the Braj Mandala Parikrama. And I actually didn't really even know at that time what is Braj Mandala Parikrama. But I was aware a little bit because there was an English book that was put out by one devotee telling some of Gurudev's Harikatha from that Parikrama. Not a very pure representation, but it was something. <laughs> so as I read this book, and I understood that this Braj Mandala Parikram was a very special, important thing for one whole month during the month of Karti, going in Braj. Now I arrived at the lotus feet of Srila Gurudev, and now I began to associate with him. For two weeks before Kartik, all through Kartik, and another two weeks after. So as the days progressed, and every day, there was maybe 20. 25 devotees from the West attending this parikrama along with a couple of hundred uh, Indian devotees. And then as the days progressed, I became more and more astonished. And I began to realize this Vaishnava is actually a Rupanuga Vaishnava. He's what I'm reading about in the Chaitanya Charitamrita. He's what Srila Bhakti Rakshak Sridhar Maharaj talked about in the conceptions that he was giving to us, a further installment to teach us what is the final prayojan tattva of our sampradaya. That we, in our sampradaya, our aim and objective is to become the speck of dust at the lotus feet of Sri Rupa Manjari and ultimately to become the intimate maidservant of Srimati Radharani. This very high and very esoteric conception now it was living and breathing right in front of my eyes. As we went to all the holy places, I was astonished at how Srila Gurudev was steeped in these moods of Radhadasyam, how he was glorifying Srimati Radharani and Krishna, how sweetly he was giving this nectar and captivating my heart more and more. And then as I walked across the fields of Braj midway in the month of Kartik, now I began to think, what great fortune do I have? That there are, and I started thinking, there are so many devotees around the world who never met Srila Prabhupada. Many devotees have joined the Krishna consciousness movement since that time, and they have some sadness that they never met Srila Prabhupada. But if those devotees were on this parikrama, then they would be completely satisfied they're meeting Srila Prabhupada, the same level of personality in this great Mahabhagwat Vaishnava Srila Bhaktivedanta Narayan Maharaj. That was my realization. So after that couple of months of being with him in Braj, it was life-changing. There was no way that I could go back and be in the same space that I was in previously. It had completely changed my life. Now I had to go forward. And then I really began to understand what is the meaning of the verse. Uh, sadhu Sangha, Sadhu Sangha, Sarva Shastri Khoi. Lava Matra Sadhu Sangha, Sarva Siddhi Hoy. By the association of the sadhus, uh, even a moment of association, you will attain perfection. And the, all the Shastras are telling this loudly, declaring, associate with sadhus, associate with sadhus. So here was that great personality who accepted me under his lotus feet yeah, and showed so much affection. And for a couple of years, we came to his parikramas and associated with him. And then in 1996, I got a phone call again from Pran Kishore. I was in Taiwan, he was in Malaysia, and he said, I've got some news. And then he said, sit down for this one. He said, Srila Gurudev is coming to the West. I said, Gor Haribol, Gor Haribol. 
And actually, I had come into the association of the disciples of Srila Gaur Govinda Maharaj and come to realize his greatness also at the same time. And at that very same time, he performed his disappearance pastime. And he even declared, you can ask uh, Jagadish Pandit Prabhu if he's here, I don't know if he's here. But he, there, Srila Gaur Govinda Maharaj said, in 1996, Prem Yuga will begin. Huh? And the real Acharya will manifest. He told this before he left this world. And suddenly, there's Srila Gurudev uh, coming like on his swan carrier to the Western world, Lufthansa Express, <laughs> landing in Holland, picking up some jivas, landing in England, picking up some more, flying over to Houston, now some more. And now we're waiting in Los Angeles airport. Rihari Prabhu told this story yesterday, how he and his wife were also waiting there. But now a few devotees began flying in from around the world, and I was supposed to be the organizer of his tour on the West Coast. We tried our best. He had no followers at that time in the West. We tried to get accommodation here and there, you know, and we arranged in Badger, California, by the grace of Nir Guna Prabhu, who stood up despite the fact that so many were objecting due to the propaganda coming from this institution against Srila Gurudev. And he said, I don't care. He's a sadhu. I'm going to host him in my house. Huh? So, Srila Gurudev's transcendental uh, preaching, his odyssey of journeying throughout the whole world began. And everywhere that he went, he came and very nicely began to pick flowers. Everywhere that he went, he began to pick flowers. What are those flowers? Everyone's heart. And he began to take those flowers and put them in his pocket. And he said, I'm going to first of all make these flowers very fragrant, very sweet and fragrant, and I want to offer them at the lotus feet of Srimati Radharani. Huh? So Srila Gurudev has now completed 10 years, now his 11th year of touring the world. He has given innumerable devotees. We have witnessed with our own eyes and ears how he has given thousands of devotees, thousands, uncountable thousands throughout the world and in India, his causeless mercy, such benedictions of mercy. So that divine personality uh, came into my life by good fortune. And I always reflect upon the opportunities that I've had to associate with him because I realize that I'm not actually qualified. He's giving this very high, uh, greatest gift that Mahaprabhu came to give. I could go on and on and on speaking about this, but there's not enough time. Anyway, he came to give this gift. But what is my capacity to receive it? Very minimal. But there's hope anyway. Because Srila Gurudev has said, don't become hopeless. If you continue to hear, uh, and you continue to chant, to follow my instructions, and you do your level best, then there is no doubt that you will come to this final goal of attainment in the very near future. Even it may take a couple of lives, but it will definitely come. So I'm concluding my short um, attempt to tell this little story of one very fallen jiva. But all of us, we have our story. How, and I've heard so many of your stories, and it's very astonishing stories. How Srila Gurudev has come into our lives and changed our lives forever. So I'm offering my Dandavat Pranams millions of times at the lotus feet of Srila Bhaktivedanta Narayan Goswami Maharaj. Vancha Kalpaturubas Chakrita Sindhu Beva Chapatitanam Pavane Vyovaishnavi. Okay, so I've received a note. I mean, this is the last night of our festival. One note is saying, we need time for the play. Now is 8.45. Okay, and the other, and Shamarani still to come. And the other one is saying, 
But there is one disciple, lady disciple of Srila Prabhupada here in our assembly who has had a lot of association with Srila Prabhupada. And she has also desired to speak some of her. Uh, she wanted to take a few minutes to give her offering before Srimati Shamarani Didi speaks. So if the Vaishnavas allow a little extension of time, then we can call on her. Manjari Dasi Didi, please come and take this one. I just called Manjari Didi. No, it says Manjari, Srila Prabhupada's disciple, has been anxiously awaiting to present her offering. And it also says that Shamarani agrees. <laughs> yes or no? I wrote this offering um, for Srila Gurudev and I sent it to him and I'll, I'll speak it now. Pujaniya Srihala Maharaj Ji, please accept my humble obeisances at your lotus feet. All glories to your divine grace. On this, your Vyas Puja day, how can I properly glorify you or the dearmost servitor of Srimati Radharani? How can I express my heartfelt appreciation for everything you have given me? You have brought me to the true conception of what Srila Prabhupada came to give, the understanding that his message is non-different from that of Srila Rupa Goswami Prabhupada. You have given, you have taught me the importance of Araju Bhagavan Vrajeshataniya Tattam Vrindavanam. This, this verse that was so dear to Srila Prabhupada. Anarpita Chirim Chirat Karunaya Vitirnakalo and so many others. These were given by Srila Prabhupada, but somehow I didn't recognize them. But you've revealed not only Srila Prabhupada, but our whole Rupa Nuka Sampradaya and the teachings of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So, how is it that one's vision on the path of bhakti becomes somehow blurry? And this is because of lack of sadhu sangha, the lack of the guidance of the pure devotee of the Lord. Therefore, I know that Srila Prabhupada has sent you to help me and I am so grateful. To do this, you have sacrificed so much of your life, your time, your peaceful bhajan, and your health, and I am ever in your debt. You once explained Vipralamba to me. It was in Mathura. I didn't understand how Vipralamba could possibly be higher than Sambhog. Vipralamba means separation, and Sambhog means union or how it Vipralamba could actually even be glorified at all. And you really wanted me to understand this idea, and you explained it very carefully and clearly. You said that when Radha and Krishna meet, 
They are so absorbed in each other that they are not aware of anything else, such as the deta details of, of their pastimes or, or even the pastimes itself or e even their own identities. But after, in separation, they remember and they become absorbed in everything in full. So the pain of Vipralamba is actually very, very sweet. It's like that when I'm with you. You are so adbhut, which means wonderful, so sundar, so beautiful, so vichitra, unpredictable and amazing, and so madhur, sweet, that I cannot think of anything beyond the moment of what you're doing. But now I am rem remembering you and your effulgent smile. In Brahma Mohan Leela, when the cowherd boys and cows became Vishnu forms, Lord Brahma saw the smile of the Vishnu forms. Srimad Bhagavatam says the Lord embraces with his smile. I know that like this, you're giving me your merciful a a affection by your smile. I'm remembering your piercing glance with your astonishing blue eyes. The glance that knows me even when I don't know myself. That glance that sees everything, past, present, future, my mind, my false ego, and my very soul. Just as the Vishnu forms give protection by their glance, you discern my condition and give me exactly what I need. I'm remembering your speaking. We pray Sri Krishna Leela Katane Sudaksham. Sudaksham means expert. There is no one who is as expert in, as you in speaking Harikatha. Just as Krishna is ever fresh, you make his Leela ever fresh. Once in Mathura, it was right before Janmastami, with a twinkle in your eye, you asked everyone to speak on why Krishna is Swartik. The word Swartik means selfish. We were shocked. Most spoke on why Krishna is not Swartik. But Madhav Maharaj explained what Krishna's Swa Arta, which means Krishna's own benefit, what this Swa Arta really is, and you were satisfied. Because the Leela of Radha Krishna is revealed before your eyes, your words are a delight to hear. They are truly nectar. I pray that these words become one with my heart. Guru Mukha Padma Vakya Chite Te Kuriya Aikya. O Maharaj, I am very far from my heart's desire. You know this even more than I do. I only pray that you always keep me with you and Srila Prabhupada in your service to Srimati Radhika. Let me follow you with one point of determination, always brimming my mind with a holy name. Let this be my Pushpanjali offering at your lotus feet on your divine Abhir Mahotsava day. Tavai vasmi, tavai vasmi, najivami toya vina, iti vigyaya devi tvam, nayamam charanam tikam. Your beti. So now to complete our evening of speakers, I want to call upon our senior most Vaishnavi in our assembly and probably most advanced amongst us, uh, Srimati Shamarani Didi. Jnanam Timirandasya Jnanam Janasalakaya Chaksurun Nalitam Yena Tasmai Sri Guru Venama I offer my unlimited obeisances in the dust of the lotus feet 
of my Parama Rajatama Diksha Guru Pad Padma, Nijalila Pravishta Om Vishnu Pad, Astautira Satasri Srimad Shila Bhakti Vedanta Swami Prabhupada, and the same unlimited obeisances in the dust of the lotus feet of my Parama Rajatama Shiksha Guru Pad Padma, Om Vishnu Pad, Astautira Satasri Srimad, Bhakti Vedanta Narayan Goswami Maharaj, to all of our Guru Varga and all the assembled devotees. I just have to correct Sri Pad, Padmanav Maharaj on one thing. I'm not exactly the most advanced Vaishnavi, but I am uh, one of the most advanced students of Dr. T. <laughs> and so I have a magic trick. <laughs> Out of this plastic bag, I pull out something that came from Houston into this plastic bag. <laughs> and it's Prashadam that Srila Gurudev touched with his own hands, and it's for distributing now to all the devotees. <laughs> Tamal, Tamal Krishna, everybody please sit down. Sit down. All right, if everyone can please be patient. If you're patient, you're going to get some Mahaprasad. Otherwise, it's going to disappear. What are you doing? Thief! Thief! Catch him! <laughs> Prabhu, what's what's his name? What's what's his name? What's his name? No, the big one. The big one. What's his name? Sh Sridham Prabhu. Here, just give it to us. We'll distribute it after Shamarani Didi's uh, lecture. You'll have to wait a few more minutes for this ultimate mercy. And secondly, I am the most advanced um, representative of the CDs of Srila, Srila Gurudev's books and Srila Gurudev's classes on Brajmanala Parikrama, along with Kirtans of Brajmanala Parikrama, uh, over many years since 1996. Very beautiful lectures on Sri Dharastikam. And generally, those of you who have come for the past years to Brajmandala Parikrama are hearing Srila Gurudev's lectures in Hindi, and here are Srila Gurudev's lectures in India, which he used to give in the mid-90s. Also, Srila Gurudev's books, Jaiva Dharma, spoke, spoken by uh, Srimati Swati Dasi, and Sri uh, Shikshastikam, or Jaiva Dharma, spoken by uh, Sripad Tridandi Maharaj yeah. and Sri Shikshastikam spoken or read aloud by in very beautiful uh, language by Srimati Swati Dasi. So this is Kali Yuga and our attention spans go and our time goes and we're involved in so many things and it's hard to read and I may forget what I read. So in this modern age of Kali Yuga it has a lot of defects. One good thing about it is that it's we have the Hari Nam in this age, and another good thing is we have the technical advancement of CD players and computers, which have CD-ROM in it. So when you're driving in your car, when you're getting up in the morning and brushing your teeth and putting on your socks, when you're cooking, cleaning, doing anything, that doesn't require full attention. This is a very perfect way, and I'm speaking because I am advanced in the realization of the pleasure that one experiences by hearing these CDs. Mm -hmm. And then you're hearing, and then your child comes along, or your husband or wife comes along, and you tell them what you just heard, then you go on hearing some more, and it changes night to day. So on this last evening, I uh, humbly recommend from personal experience that, uh, and you could give it out as presents also, 
for graduations, bar mitzvahs, anniversaries, birthdays, when a friend comes and you just don't know what to give them. Okay. And you can get them all in the back table from um, from the back table there, from Madan Mohan Prabhu. Uh, Man Mohan Prabhu, sorry. Now, I wanted to share with you the reason I'm sitting is because I have a sitting activity of a computer in front of me. But first I wanted to share with you one class on Vilapakus Manjali that Srila Gurudev gave to some of my god brothers, particularly on the subject matter of separation from Guru. We were all feeling, I don't think any one of us here wasn't feeling when Srila Gurudev was speaking on a live webcast from Houston and he was doing his uh, human-like pastimes of being very frail and weak and not even being able to shape his words or sentences. I think that at least 80% of the devotees here were weeping as you were watching him, feeling uh, fear of separation of an imminent departure. And so was I. But then, shortly after that, we uh, resumed our pleasantries of carrying on our life. So in order to increase our separation from Sri Guru, for Sri Guru, Srila Gurudev gave this talk in uh, about 1991 or so. So I'd like to share with you some of his points. He was saying that the level of separation that we should have for Sri Guru is the same as the level of separation that a pure Raganuga devotee has for Srimati Radhika. He explained this concept of separation for Sri Guru in his commentary to the seventh verse of Vilapakus Manjali. And then you can see what he means by what is the intensity of separation that the disciple has for the Guru who is really serious about making advancement in Bhakti. The verse is, O Swamini, my mistress Radhika, the heart of this maidservant constantly burns in the great conflagration or the great forest fire of separation from you. That means a conflagration or a forest fire is suppose you're in the middle of the fire and there's fire coming from all ends, from up, down, all the sides. And in the very next second, that fire is about to devour you. That kind of being caught in the middle of a conflagration is what Srila Raghunath Das Goswami is speaking about as his heart is burning in separation. Being thus afflicted and crying out with great love, I lament in the following verses. So Vilapakus Manjali means a um, bouquet of flower-like lamentations offered at the feet of Srimati Radhika. So Srila Gurudev was explaining that this is how the real disciple feels towards his Gurudev. And without that feeling, we can never develop feelings of separation for um, any of our Goswamis or for Radha and Krishna. And without those feelings of separation, there's no question of entering into any advanced stage of bhakti or entering into spontaneous devotion or Raganuga bhakti, which is our goal. He was telling them that all advancement depends, every single ounce of advancement depends upon how intensely we serve our Gurudev and all relationships and all experiences evolve from that relationship 
and that experience. And then Gurudev said, I have got personal experience of this. Then he said, who else has personal experience? Srila Raghunath Das Goswami. After the departure of Srila Rupa Goswami, Srila Raghunath Das Goswami offered that beautiful prayer. Sun Sanyayate Mahagostam Garindra Jagadayate. Ever since your disappearance, ever since I lost sight of you, Vrindavan has become just like a desolate, empty desert. And Govardhan, which was so um, beautiful and opulent and lush in my eyes, because Govardhan is made, the caves of Govardhan are made of beautiful colored sparkling mirrors and all the trees on Govardhan, the um, trunks and bark and branches, some of them are made of sapphires with um, jeweled fruits and flowers, ruby fruits and diamond flowers and others have emerald bark and emerald branches with sapphire flowers. All the um, trees and uh, bushes and caves and kunjas of Govardhan were like that. But now that I'm feeling bereft of your association, Govardhan has become just like a python ready to devour. And as far as Radhakun goes, Radhakun has become just like the gaping mouth of a tigress. So in this way, Srila Gurudev is saying that Srila Raghunath Das Goswami is showing us the example of how to be with our Gurudev. One of our God brothers who was in this darshan with Srila Gurudev was saying that we should, was saying when Gurudev said that the intensity of service, the keen service to Guru should be so great that the Guru no longer sees the disciple as a disciple, but he actually becomes dependent upon that disciple and sees him as my heart. And this was true in the case of Ishara Puripad and Madhavendra Puri, his Guru, and also in the case of um, Govindadas and Ishara Puri. So then my God brother said, but that relationship is very rare to have such a relationship with Guru that he's thinking, this is not my disciple, this is my heart. So Gurudev says, it's rare, but that's the relationship we want. And that's the relationship we have to have if we want to um, to make any advancement. He said, when we have a Mahotsava, like either an appearance day festival, like this festival is the Vyasa Puja festival of Srila Gurudev, or a disappearance festival, as Gurudev was making us feel when he was showing us those live webcasts. The purpose of those festivals is one. The purpose is to weep. So we have to make so many arrangements, he said, for feeding so many Vaishnavas and getting so much paraphernalia, setting up mics, invitations, that the only time we may weep is when we're speaking some glorification. And then that tear may not come. But the real meaning of bhajan is when one feels that separation. If we're thinking, that my relationship with Gurudev is that he is so great and I am so low, then we won't feel that intense separation and no tears will come, no real tears will come. And if, he, if we're thinking, he is my very life, he is my very soul, he is my very heart, then some real tears can come. The meaning of bhajan is to be a vesh, or absorbed in, absorption to the point of 
identifying with. That is, I lose the sense of myself and I become fully absorbed in the object of worship. Now I have a vesh. I already have a vesh. I'm very advanced in a vesh. But my advancement in a vesh is in this body. I am this body and everything in relation to this body is mine. But transcendental avesh means to identify with my worshipable object. That what makes my worshipable object happy, that's my happiness. What makes him or her sad, that's my sadness. If Radharani is sad that Krishna left for Mathura, then that's the sadness of her uh, servants. If Radharani is happy that Krishna is under her control or that she's just defeated him in a dice game, then her servants think that their life is now successful. So this Avesh, he's explaining that one must have first in Gurudev, otherwise it's not possible to have it anywhere. He said that weeping is our dharma. Of course, until we come to the platform of Asakti, which is a very advanced platform, where the actual reflections of the transcendental realm and pastimes comes in the heart, until that time, he said, our weeping is just like crocodile tears. One minute I'm weeping and the next minute I'm angry. Don't you realize who I am and what I told you to do? But that weeping, though it's rare and though it's high, he said that is our uh, aim and objective in the stage of sadhana. He gave another example of Srila Raghunath Das Goswami's um, avesh in separation with his Gurudev, that is Srila Rupa Goswami, or as in the case of the beginning of Vilapakus Manjali, Sri Rupa Manjari, Tam Rupa Manjari Sakhi Pratita Paresman. He's as though laughing. O oh, Rupa Manjari, you're known as a very chaste lady in Braj. So isn't it a strange thing that even though your husband is away in Mathura for the last few days selling cows, isn't it strange that on your bimba fruit lips, you have a uh, cut. It looks like that cut came from a big parrot who bit your lip, thinking that your lip was a bimba fruit. I don't know if any of you have seen a bimba fruit. It's like uh, it's kind of something like a tomato, but it's much more lush and it's total sweet and delicious. So thinking that your lips was a bimba fruit, some parrot has bitten your lips. Is that why you have a cut in it? So this has a very esoteric meaning. That is, whenever Srimati Radhika gets a mark on her body from her services to Krishna, her maidservants experience the same thing. So Gurudev said, is uh, Raghunath Das Goswami laughing when he's telling this joke, or is he weeping? Actually, he's weeping because he's remembering, because he has three uh, consciousnesses. One is internal consciousness, one is intermediate consciousness, and one is external consciousness. In the internal consciousness, he's in the pastimes as Rati Manjari, and then he comes out in separation and weeps and writes and speaks, but always feeling separation from those pastimes. So feeling separation, he's thinking, oh, will I ever have that experience again? So this feeling of separation starts with Sri Gurudev. So uh, I'll end this part of the presentation just to uh, share with you those few words of Srila Gurudev. And how will we have indebtedness to him when we feel that he's our near and dear and when he's in our heart, when he's our heart. And when we have that feeling of um, indebtedness, then we can feel that separation. So uh, I think that most of you, I think at least 80% of you, have the paintings on your altar 
of Seva Kunj and uh, the four Mandris. So for the next few minutes, if it's all right, I'd like to share with you how, how the painting evolved from Gurudev's words and from Gurudev's heart, uh, just so that whenever you are looking at your altar or doing worship or looking at your wall, which has that picture, you can remember these things about Srila Gurudev. Can, would somebody mind holding it up as I'm speaking? Maharaj. So it all started in September, on September 20th. Gurudev said, I have a great memory that I can remember exact dates. But the reason that I have a great memory is because we've transcribed the tapes with the dates on the tape, and then we just look at the paper. <laughs> so on September 30th, Srila Gurudev took me into one of his, the room next to his room at Sri Keshwaji Gaudiya Mutt when he was on the second floor, and he showed me a large painting of this scene that was done by an Indian artist in 1993. And he said, I don't like this painting. I paid 3,000 3, rupees to have this painting done, but I'm not at all satisfied with it. Radha Krishna looked too old and the proportions aren't right. So can you do something to correct it? So I said to him, if I do something to correct one part, then all the other parts, which are not, already not so great, they're going to look worse by comparison. So it's better if I would just start from the beginning if you want me to make it better. So then he was very pleased and he gave me some other references to copy. So I started by showing him some sketches. And again, Srila Gurudev posed for the pictures. He posed for Krishna holding out his hand to Radhika, like, what more can I give you? I've already put my prized possession, my flute, at your lotus feet and surrender to you. What more can I give you? Generally, Srila... Thank you. Generally, Srila Gurudev uh, says that the, although all the, um, all the things, you could say, all the things in Vrindavan, Goloka Vrindavan, are fully conscious, like the flute, like the caves, like Radharani's uh, ornaments, though they're also conscious because they're Chinmore, they're Sachidananda, they generally don't manifest their uh, participation because that would disrupt the pastime. Like Govardhan uh, takes the form of stone, like a stunned, ecstatic servant, and thus actually becomes stone so that he doesn't, he can watch without creating disturbance. He's serving by facilitating, by becoming the stone cave, and he's not disturbing the pastime. They don't think that, oh, somebody's watching. But here, in this instance, if you look closely at the flute, the, that the elephant head of the flute, there's tears coming from the flute's eyes. So the flute is sad that I was, you know, I was the supreme, and the gopis were envious of me, but here I am, surrendered at the feet of Radhika. So the flute is crying. So Krishna is saying, Gurudev held out his hand, that Krishna is saying, I've surrendered my prized possession at your lotus feet. What more can I give you? And Gurudev said, Krishna's other hand um, should be on Radhika's knee. Is it? Should one be on the knee and one calling out? So Gurudev said, I don't like this other painting. Krishna should be 14. Radhika should be 13 with very lovely appearance and the dress of the Brijbasi. And when he asked me to paint it, he said, can you paint my heart? Radhika should be somewhat laughing and at the same time somewhat angry. And Krishna should look a little bit ashamed. He said, this is called Kilakinchi Dabhav, which is a combination of many, many emotions, contradictory emotions, but all together at one time. He said, Srimati Radhika has done man, and Krishna has come to please her, but she's not pleased. He then put his head at her lotus feet, and she took that pose. And Gurudev 
did the pose. He said she's wearing a trans, almost transparent veil. That means she wants him to think that she's looking away, but with her sidelong glance, she can see right through her veil, and she's looking towards him. So she's looking away and looking towards him. Krishna is also laughing, but ashamed, and they both have very lovely faces. So I asked, brilliant question, but isn't painting suja work? So, Gur so Gurudev said, Srimati Chitra Devi used to paint. Chitra, was, she's one of the eight principal sakis. She, and uh, in one Brajmanala Parikrama, Gurudev said that Chitra Devi is teaching me how to paint. So she's teaching Shamarani how to paint. So Chitra Devi used to paint. She was a very good painter. She and Vasaka Devi both painted. In fact, she was such a good painter, she painted a picture of Krishna on a leaf. And when Radharani saw that picture of Krishna on the leaf, this is before she ever met Krishna, the picture was so powerful that Radharani would try to run away from the leaf and she would feel that Krishna on the picture was running after her and she couldn't escape. So then Gurudev said, in order to put this in your heart, I said, how can I put this picture in my heart? Because if I don't, then I can't, really make anything of any benefit to anybody if I can't put it first in my heart. So Gurudev said, in order to put this in your heart, you have to think that you're a Palyadasi of Srimati Radhika and do what she wants you to do. So I said, well, how can I hear her? I'm a conditioned soul. So he said, your holy master, Prabhupada, will appear and take you. And on the other side, Srimati will also do that and all bobs will come. He wasn't only speaking to me because he knew that I made transcriptions and he knew we had prints out and he knew we would distribute it. So he's speaking to everybody. Then he said, when I showed him the picture, this is October 10th, also in Matura, and there was some discrepancies in the drawing. So he said, Radhika's veil should look very, very thin so that one could see through it and she should be peeping through there. At present, your drawing looks like Sri Vigraha, the deity, with a very round face. But it shouldn't look like that. The bhav is good, but something more is required. They should be more delicate and attractive. Krishna's shirt. See, everything came from Gurudev, including what Krishna's shirt looks like. He said Krishna's shirt should be transparent. Make it like that. Then he pointed to one Indian poster of Krishna, and that in the poster, Krishna was wearing a very tight, transparent shirt. So, Guru, so Gurudev said, tightness makes anything look beautiful, especially for ladies, but it also applies to Krishna. He said, don't make them look English or American. Now, now we move to Bombay. Gurudev's classes, Gurudev uh, started giving classes in Bombay at the um, Juhu Beach Iskon Temple. And now, I was no longer showing him drawings, but I was showing him the painting as it was beginning. Gurudev saw it and he said, Radharani should have a blue veil and a red skirt. Sometimes she wears the opposite a blue skirt and a red veil, but this time she's wearing it this way. Krishna should wear a red shirt and a yellow chatter. Radharani should have musk, this blue dot, musk. Musk comes from a deer, the navel of the deer. She should have musk on the center of her chin, and her dress should have very opulent borders. And he said I should put all...